We cover all kinds of topics here on The Story, but there are a few that we really focus in on and bring you updates every step of the way. Well, it turns out a lot happened with a couple of those topics in the time we were off the air during the Olympics. And even though you may have seen little snippets or updates on our other shows, we call them the normal newscasts, you know what? They don't do it like we do because we're just kind of a different show. So let's get caught up, shall we? We're going to start with the ambulance crisis in Multnomah County. The current contract says that AMR has to respond to 90% of life-threatening calls in urban areas within eight minutes. That is a target, my friends, they have not hit since March of 2022. Yes, two years ago. The provider, AMR, blames Multnomah County's unique rule that two paramedics must be in every ambulance, as well as a national paramedic shortage. The county, for its part, stood by that requirement for a year plus, insisting it provides the best medical care. Well, earlier this month, finally, a compromise between AMR and the county after several months of closed door mediation. It's a one year pilot that will now allow AMR to staff some ambulances with one paramedic and one EMT as long as the company meets certain other benchmarks between now and November. Here's what those are. AMR has to staff at least 20 two paramedic crews. That should be doable because right now they're able to staff between 34 and 44 of those crews. Also, the company needs to deploy enough ambulances with two EMTs to cover 85% of the non-emergency calls. And they can use the hybrid one paramedic, one EMT model to supplement the rest of their ranks. But that's not all. They also have to produce monthly compliance reports with response times, which will be shared with you and me and the public. Here's how AMR's operation manager reacted to the recent compromise. Um, so for us, this is absolutely the right direction. We're excited about it, we're confident about it, but more so I'm just really happy that the county and us are now together again and working together again. As we can pilot the program, uh, measure its efficacy, and determine what the path forward will be, not just for the year's mediated agreement, but for the next five years of EMS. All right, we'll be watching. Also, while we were off for the Olympics, Portland's first arrest under the camping ban. Only problem, when city police officers took the man to jail, county sheriff's deputies refused to book him. Multnomah County Sheriff Nicole Morrissey O'Donnell says that's because of a policy that she stands behind, that the jail will only book people accused of violating state law, not a local ordinance like a camping ban. She also did release a statement that said arresting and booking our way out of the housing crisis is not a constructive solution. It was kind of a curveball that nobody saw coming. Mayor Ted Wheeler and the sheriff issued a joint statement earlier this month that said they're going to meet later this week to discuss the next steps. But for now, anyone arrested for violating the camping ban in the city of Portland is given a citation and a court date and sent on their way.